All right, we're just going to talk briefly about pericardial effusion. This is an image, an e a, a radiographic image of an 11 and a half year old malnutrient golden retriever. And you can note that number one, if you look at that bar across, we have a generalized cardiomegaly or a globoid heart with an enlarged cardiac silhouette. And this is one of the hallmarks of pericardial effusion. This dog, if you look at number two uh, at the arrow, you can see uh, some pleural effusion as well. This is an image, an echocardiographic image of a nine-year-old female sprayed mixed breed dog. And what you can see at the bottom is pericardial effusion. So you can see that the pericardium is that bright line at the bottom. And then the dark line above it is the pericardial effusion. And then what we can see is we have a yellow arrow and the arrow is pointing to the right atrial wall, which has been collapsed. It's collapsed because the pressure in the pericardium is pushing on it. And this is an indicative of cardiac tamponade. So these animals are ones where we, they will often have an electrical alternans. So every other R wave will be smaller and they need to have a pericardiocentesis immediately. Okay, so in summary, bradyarrhythmias are never normal in cats, but they can be normal or compensatory in dogs. Any cat with bradycardia, we eliminate uh, hyperkalemia or sepsis immediately. Those are our two rule outs that we want to figure out as soon as possible. If we have an animal with third degree AV black, we will always refer to it for a pacemaker. Always do electrolytes first, however, as we have seen severe hyperkalemia in a dog with a ruptured urinary tract that mimic third degree AV block. And so always, always, always do electrolytes first. Okay, thank you very much. This was great and I hope you enjoyed it.